As we saw last time, the Earth being struck by a huge meteorite four and a half thousand years ago completely destroys Lyle's millions of years. The world's top experts calculated it would lead to vast tidal waves at least three miles high. Those waves would have moved at nearly the speed of sound and engulfed the entire Earth within about one day. But our society loves stories about dinosaurs roaming the Earth millions of years ago. Most children have books about dinosaurs, telling them they died out millions of years ago. But how does anyone know that they died out millions of years ago? Lyle's millions of years were based only on his claim that all the sedimentary rocks in the geological record were laid down at three millimetres a century. That idea was washed away when the huge meteorite struck. The observations of the Earth's axis tilt show that happened about four and a half thousand years ago. And the fact that the dinosaurs only died out recently was demonstrated by Mary Schweitzer. Those blood vessels from unfossilised T. rex remains. Blood vessels still containing blood cells. Other paleontologists have found them in other dinosaurs. So it's not only T. rex which did not die out millions of years ago. Since blood vessels and blood cells can't last very long, even some geologists have started to admit that the geological timescale is wrong. The ancient Cambodian temple of Angkor Wat has medallions carved into the walls showing the creatures that were worshipped there. One of the medallions shows an animal with its back covered with plates, which are the trademark of the Stegosaurus. There are many ancient pieces of pottery from South America, which are decorated with pictures of creatures, including dinosaurs. On one piece of pottery, we see a bird flapping its wings above a Stegosaurus, in front of which is a Triceratops. There are two other dinosaurs, one on either side of what may be an eel. On another piece of pottery, we see what looks like a warrior, with a forked spear in one hand and a hatchet in the other, riding on a Triceratops. A magnificent tapestry at the Chapel of San Jordi in Barcelona, dating from 1450, shows St George slaying a recognisable dinosaur. In the remote mountains of the Republic of Georgia is the church of Tsaminda Sameba, nearly 2,200 metres above sea level. Over the belfry window, we see a pair of dinosaurs chiselled into the stone. People have been finding cave paintings of dinosaurs for many years, and villagers from central China have, for at least a century, been making broth from unfossilised dinosaur bones together with other ingredients, which they say is very effective for treating cramps and dizziness. All of these items of evidence that dinosaurs have not been extinct for very long were ignored, denied or covered up for years. But now that so much evidence is facing us on every side, even secular scientists are beginning to acknowledge there is strong evidence for recent dinosaurs. But extinction, millions of years ago, can't be officially denied until the best in the field theory is changed. The scientific establishment are in a quandary about that. But if we'd looked at what the Bible says, this evidence of dinosaurs living among men would not have come as any surprise at all. We see God telling Noah in Genesis 6.20 of the birds after their kind and of the animals after their kind and of every creeping thing of the earth after its kind, two of every kind shall come to you to keep them alive. Every kind obviously includes dinosaurs, and there was no need to take thousand-year-old giants. All dinosaurs hatched from eggs not much bigger than a rugby ball, and grew larger throughout their whole life. 
It would make sense to take young animals onto the ark. After leaving the ark, some of them did grow to be very large, as we can see in Job chapter 40. Look now at the behemoth which I made along with you. He eats grass like an ox. See now, his strength is in his hips, and his power is in his stomach muscles. He moves his tail like a cedar. The sinews of his thighs are tightly knit. His bones are like beams of bronze, his ribs like bars of iron. He moves his tail like a cedar. In the Bible, the cedar is always the mightiest of the trees. What creature has a tail like that? A sauropod would qualify. But there's probably something wrong with this reconstruction. Imprints of sauropod tails have never been found behind their footprints. They probably held their tails upright, which would have made them look even more like cedars. And bones like beams of bronze certainly fit with a sauropod, but not with any non-dinosaurs that I can think of. He is confident, though the Jordan gushes into his mouth. I don't think the Jordan even in full flood, ever gets deep enough to trouble a creature like this. We find another impressive creature in Job 41. Out of his mouth go flames, sparks of fire shoot out, smoke pours from his nostrils as a boiling pot over burning reeds. His breath sets coals ablaze and flames dart from his mouth. This reminds me of a little creature called a bombardier beetle. This beetle contains a little explosive factory which produces hydroquinones and peroxide. It stores them in a collecting bladder where this explosive mixture does not explode. But if the beetle is attacked, it squirts some of this mixture into an explosion chamber, closes the valve and then squirts in enzymes which make the mixture explode. It heats up little bullets of acid, which shoot out at high temperature from two rapid-fire cannons in its back end. David Rosevier wrote about the bombardier beetle. Dinosaur remains have been found which have cavities in the skulls with a similar pattern to those which produce and fire hot fumes from the back end of the bombardier beetle. The skull constructions of Carithosaurus, Lambiosaurus, and Parasaurolophus suggest that these great creatures of a past era could fire hot gases from their nostrils. Sounds like a very interesting possibility. If we scale up the explosive potential of the little beetle to the enormous size of these monsters, we could expect fireworks. And these creatures have bone not flesh for faces and noses, below their explosive chemical chamber crests. Nothing that would get roasted in a fireworks display. God told Job to look at these creatures. Man and dinosaurs lived together until, like many thousands of other species, they became extinct. And that was after the temple of Angkor Wat was built after the South American pottery was made, and probably after the tapestry of St. Jordi was woven, and the church of Tsaminda Sameba was built, and recent enough to still make medicinal broth from their bones, bones which contain blood vessels still containing blood cells. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.